Hey there, everybody. I know we talked a little bit about the brick today, and I went back and I wanted to talk a little bit about constraints and how we could possibly make a cube, in this case, rotate off of different axes. So I know that was kind of a burning question for some folks. Now, this is a pretty advanced method as we go forward. So again, this is not the easiest way to do it. The easiest way is to just have multiple bricks, turn your visibility on and off. But what you can see here that I have set up is a simple cube, and then I have some parent constraints that actually constrain to something called locators. So as you can see, as my brick that has a center mass jumps to this locator, and then I animate that locator, which thus controls the brick, and then it's passed off into the next thing. So how do we get this to work? Well, um, again, a little complex, but uh, not totally undoable. So let's go ahead and make a new scene and I'll show you. So we need to kind of know what pivot points our brick or our cube in this case is going to rotate off of. So we're gonna create a cube first, and then I'm gonna create two locators, which are under create locator. And you can actually just duplicate one if you really want. So do a control D and then pull this one here. So these are locators, these do not render, these are invisible. Um, you can actually hide them by turning off the controllers and locators right there. That will hide them in your, your viewport. All right, let's turn wireframe on shaded so you can see a little bit. And let's go ahead and get started. So initially we wanna set some keyframes and it's as easy as this. So we're gonna set um, our brick kind of falling from the sky, maybe 10 frames in, boom, the brick falls. And we're gonna just add another keyframe there to get it a little bit more worthy. Now I'm gonna go ahead and snap my pivot points. So I'm gonna hit W and then I'm going to make sure that I push my middle mouse button down. And that will actually, if I'm holding the V key, I can snap my pivot point, in this case, snap my locator to that specific control. So we have keyframes here, it ends at frame 10. Well, I want to again, use this as a controller for this cube. So we wanna do a parent constraint. Let's go ahead and make a parent constraint like we learned today. I'm gonna to grab the locator, I'm gonna shift select and grab the cube. Constraint, parent, and in this case, I'm gonna just keep everything default and hit apply. Now, when I do that, you're gonna notice, oh no, my animation went away. Well, that's not necessarily the case. That is, uh, there's actually a switch that can turn on and off this locator as we see fit, and that is called blend parent. So what we need to do is from frame one, if I type zero, binary, turn it off, and I set a key on frame one, key selected, blend parent, and I go to frame 10 and I key it. That means for frames one to 10, it's off, and then I can go to frame the next frame, in my case, it's actually frame 11, but or number 12, and I can turn this on. And when I turn that on, it doesn't seem like much happens, but what actually happens now is I pass it over to this controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a key for that controller on frame 12. And then I'm, because I have a parent constraint, I'm going to rotate that cube downward to frame 20. So now what we've done is kind of a handoff. It's blended, it's not on, it goes down, boom, and now it reads the new pivot point on frame 12. It reads the pivot point that we've deemed from the locator. So we've handed off right there this, and we can keep doing this as well. So if we wanted to add another one, I'm gonna hold B down and snap it maybe to this top portion, maybe it's climbing stairs or something. Um, what I can do now is create that parent constraint. So grab the new locator, grab the cube and say constraint parent. I need to make sure this is turned off, don't I? Because I don't want it snapping. And from you know frame one, I'll set a keyframe. It will go here, it moves. And I want it to go to frame 20. I still want that to be turned off, obviously. But now we have a unique situation, right? So we can see that our blend parent, right, turns on, but it, how does it control between the two? So now I actually have to set keys on my parent constraint. And you can see now I have locator one and locator two, which are both on, meaning this cube is influenced by both. So what I'm gonna wanna do is look at my cube and say, okay, 
So that cube is influenced up until frame 20 with locator 1. So I can set that for frame 20 and I can turn off locator 2 for frame 20. And then I'll just go back in time and I'll set, you know, just keyframes just to be safe on these as well. So everything still passes. And now on frame 21, I want it to hand off. So I'm going to turn locator 1 off, set a key. And that's just the next frame. And turn on locator 2 and set a key. And what will happen is, it doesn't look like much, but now, oh my goodness, look at this. Boom. We can set some keyframes. How cool is that? So let's undo this. And right here, we'll go ahead and, um, oops, let me grab this locator, set a key, move it up a few frames. And again, this is obviously, you would put the locators where you want, set a key. And now it goes from frame to frame. So boom, 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 handoff. Again, not easy, but we figured it out. The, the ball holds it, or the, excuse me, the cube holds its rotation. That should give you a good starting point on parent constraints. You can use tons of locators, turning them on and off. I uh, hope you enjoy that lesson. And uh, again, problem solving in Maya doesn't just end when you're a, a student. It keeps going. And this just shows you that, you know, we learn something new every day. And I've done this previously by passing objects from one rig to another, but I never thought I could do this with a rig here. So hope you enjoy this. I'll talk to you soon.